I seek refuge in Allah from Sayyid India cares in the name of Allah the beneficent and the merciful in one of the statements by Imam Ali peace be upon him we read Their clemency is an indicative of their knowledge. You dear religion students and Islamic sciences students, who are actually the students of Imam Sadiq, peace be upon him. And are the true followers of the Holy Quran and Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon him. Should find out what true knowledge and science is the type which makes you prosperous in this life and hereafter. Sometimes people just carry knowledge and sometimes it is imposed upon them. The narrations tell us one who convinces knowledge Sometimes when you study, read a book, and contemplate, and some of things which have been unknown to you reveal themselves and then becomes your knowledge. Sometimes we we'll learn this knowledge little by little, sometimes we impose upon ourselves. Even though this imposition is a way to acquire knowledge, meaning that when you're impatient, you have to impose yourself to be tolerant, so that gradually you become tolerant. However, the imposed knowledge is completely useless. <laughs> it is the convinced knowledge which is of some use. It has been mentioned in the narrations and in other books as well. It resembles knowledge to a light which is granted to some of the souls by Allah Almighty. Or Allah Almighty Himself would grant this to whoever, whoever He wants. What is a knowledge which has been compared to light? The above mentioned statement by Imam Ali, peace be upon him, tells us that it is a knowledge accompanied by ethics. It means that as the unknowns are revealed to us gradually and we start to know the things we didn't know before, we should develop our morality along with our knowledge. In this remark, Imam Ali, peace be upon him, equates knowledge with being clement. And that we must see how clement someone is against being bullied. And how much he resists telling lies, being backbite about or being accused. <coughs> how much he can avoid showing bad or inappropriate reactions. This is called clemency. 
Imam Ali, peace be upon him, states their clemency is indicative of their knowledge. Their clemency shows you and makes you aware and it is a sign of their knowledge. One may study a lot and ena enable himself to answer a lot of questions or solve many scientific problems. But he may be unable to tolerate a harsh word because he's not clement and he will not gain that light. The knowledge of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon him, which is light, such men can't have it. And if someone is clement to a limited extent, therefore he will be granted the light to that extent. And that one with more clemency will have a bigger share of the light. The Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, had many companions who were his students and he taught them day and night, every month and every year. The statements made by the Holy Prophet were the true knowledge. His actions were the true knowledge as well. If they did something before the Holy Prophet and the Holy Prophet didn't reject or denounce it, it was concluded correct, which is the true knowledge. The companions of Holy Prophet were always learning knowledge. Knowledge is not just limited to the books. The quality of the prophets walking, looking, reciting the Holy Quran, performing prayers, answering questions, preaching people, eating and visiting people, they were all parts of the true knowledge. These are traditions. The words of the infallibles, the actions and Takir of the infallibles. The companions of the Holy Prophet were always with His Holiness. And the Holy Prophet lived among people either in the Holy Mecca or in Holy Medina. Except for a few hours of rest. The Holy Prophet was always with people. People were aware of what he would do and say. And then they became scholars. Because they knew thousands of things about the Holy Prophet. From what they had heard and what they had seen. They were the scholars and they had the knowledge. However, the Holy Quran speaks of some of the companions in this way. We will punish them twice. It is not about the Jews or Christians, polytheists or infidels, but it is said about the companions of our Holy Prophet. It has been interpreted that once they will be punished at a time of their death, and for the second time they will be chastised in the re resurrection day. The because the Holy Quran has stated we will punish them twice and them has mentioned the issue related to the resurrection day. They were also scholars and the companions of the Prophet. There were other companions who their clemency is an indicative of their knowledge. There is a narration saying that Maqdad comes 8th in the ranking of faith. Abu Dhari, ninth. Salman comes the tenth. Of course, these rankings belong to people other than infallible imams. They are regarded on a scale of one to ten. We're studying religion. And we are the followers of Ahlul Bayt and we are learning their teachings either their teachings or the fundamentals of the teachings so that we could make the most out of their teachings. Then we'll get our ranking as the first, second, third, fourth, or no, sometimes we're not even in the first level of faith. 
خود زنهای پیغمبر زوجات پیغمبر صلی الله علیه و آله The wives of the holy prophet lived with him too اگه کسای دیگه Some people were with the Prophet just during the day, but the wives of the Holy Prophet lived with them day and night. They knew many of the secrets of the Holy Prophet. Apparently, they were the closest to, the, to His Holiness. But one of them becomes someone like Lady Khadija. May reside in paradise and peace be upon her. About whom the Holy Prophet said, there is no one like Khadija. While it was many years after the demise of Lady Khadija, and about another of his wife, there is a narration that the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, pointed to her house and said, the horn of Satan will appear from this house. That's the way knowledge is different. One becomes a great person, the other one turns into an evil individual. But those who want to be successful and work hard have problems and follow the teachings of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. They should not limit themselves to just learn Islamic jurisprudence and Islamic laws. Or to learn the interpretation of the whole Quran and the science of Hadith and Islamic principles and ethics. They should be after convinced knowledge. And it means they should convince knowledge, not just use it as a tool. Like when you use your money to run your life. But basically, you're not interested in money itself. Money is a tool by which we try to run our families. Some of us have more of it, some have less. One is greedy, the other one is not. Knowledge is not money. Of course, we can use it as a tool. But you have to try to gain divine light. The real light is that Allah Himself would grant it, and Allah Almighty cannot be deceived. The Holy Prophet has stated, no one can deceive Allah Almighty. Allah Almighty will grant His light to everyone according to His capacity and potentials. Some of it is granted by Allah Almighty Himself. Some of it, it is acquisitive and is optional. Meaning that every human being should try hard to gain it. Some of it, the ethics, a scholar, would experience everything themselves so that they could have the clemency which is the consequence of knowledge, the type of knowledge which is granted by Allah Almighty. They would think about the situations in which someone might offend them and how much they can stand it. This way they tested their tolerance against offenses cast on them. Does a woman behave towards her mother, sister, daughter, her husband, brother, relatives, her classmates, her elder family members or the younger ones? <coughs> based on social and conventional standards or based on the teachings of our infallible imams peace be upon them if we don't acquire clemency we can neither gain the divine light nor can we transfer it to the others and guide them to the true path.
But if we're clement people, we can take the hands of some people who are truly miserable, not in terms of finance or health, but in terms of reality, which is a spiritual or mental, and save them. Sometimes a person is not very knowledgeable, or according to narration, he has not acquired imposed knowledge. But since he can save a number of people, he attains a higher divine position. There are some people with high scientific and academic knowledge who seldom save people. This is what we call clemency. And clemency is one of the significant examples. Imagine someone has accused you of something. How much can you tolerate him and overlook him and show no reaction and not punish them while you have the power? And don't change your behavior towards them. For example, if a student of yours or the teacher or a family member to whom you have been kind and you shouldn't change your behavior toward them. What we read about the life story of great people is that they treat such insulting remarks and behaviors completely the opposite and they try to help who have insulted them even more than before. This is what we call clemency, which is an indicative of knowledge, not the normal acquired science. It becomes an introduction for the line granted to us by Allah Almighty. The light which makes us believe in Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, and the Quran as the main standard. The story I am going to tell you has been narrated many times in different versions. There lived a father-in-law and his son-in-law, one mother-in-law and one daughter-in-law, a student and a teacher. There are different versions of such stories. The son-in-law would say that he did not deserve his father-in-law. The father-in-law would say that he did not deserve such a son-in-law. This is a high position. Sometimes people say so jokingly and sometimes they say it seriously. Meaning that they, they really don't think they deserve such good family members. Sons-in-law, fathers-in-law, mothers-in-law, or daughters-in-law. This is the clemency. Clemency paves the way for such light. When both of them act like this, the result becomes this. Sometimes it's a one-way street. However, those who follow ethics will gain such light. And then they can not only guide the people of their time, but also the ones after them. Even their interpretations and attitude will guide people after them. This happens for people who follow the teachings of Ahlul Bayt, no difference if they're men, women, young or old, housewives, or else. 
This has various consequences. What matters is that along with scientific growth and development, we gain divine knowledge as well, which constitutes ethics. This is to say we have to match ourselves and our behaviors with those of Ahlul Bayt that we hear or read from. It may not happen in one day or one year or at once, but if we try it hard for 20 years, 30, 40 or 50 years and finally happens, it will be worth it. That one becomes like Abu Dharm, Maqtad, or Salman at the end of his life. The sedition which happened after the martyrdom of Holy Prophet of Islam. With the martyrdom of Lady Fatima, peace be upon her, being one of its biggest tragedies and insults made toward Imamali, let many people who didn't have the divine knowledge stray. They were trapped, they had the conventional and imposed knowledge, but not the convinced knowledge, though they were companions of the Holy Prophet. There is a narration about one of the companions of the Holy Prophet and Imam Ali, peace be upon them, whose heart hesitated and doubted about Imam Ali's righteousness. In the same narration, it is said that one whose heart remained faithful was Mekta, as he felt no doubt at all. When someone has the divine knowledge and light, he will never be in doubt. Proportionate to the light they have been granted. Nonetheless, we read in an Irish in the Magdad ranking was eight. Abu Dhar had a higher position, and after that, Salman. If you got the first ranking, it would be okay because it would be easier for you to go to second and third ranking like the steps of a ladder. You cannot jump 10 steps on a ladder simultaneously and when you move up one instead, your legs will find a power to continue to move up the second and the third. You have to do it little by little. Those who became great people were not great in the beginning. They achieved their objectives gradually. You need to make a decision, trust in Allah, ask for help from infallible Imams and decides. And he will succeed with no doubt. Then this will be valuable. And this will help you in this world, helping you not to get upset. Not to lose interest, lose interest in Allah Almighty or complain to Him in hardships. This will make this very tough idea that whatever comes to us from Allah Almighty's welcome seem ordinary. Then you will realize that Allah Almighty is a friend, a helper. Allah wishes the best for His servants and likes those sinners to change into good. But they themselves should make some efforts. And find the clemency which is the main factor in ethics. That is why Imam Ali stated that, that we should look at a person's clemency and see how knowledgeable he is. 
روایت داره There is a narration about the negative propaganda that Muawiyah had a spread against the Mamali and Imam Hussein in Syria. And the people were cynical and had been brainwashed about them. A Syrian young man entered Medina after the martyrdom of Imam Ali. And ran into Imam Hassan. Someone told him, This is Hassan ibn Ali, peace be upon him. He approached Imam, and because it was the time of Muawiyah's ruling, Imam Hassan didn't have any army and tore it or bodyguards. He started cursing and insulting Imam Hassan. Imam just listened and when he finished his insulting Imam took him to his house and he stayed for a few days in Medina saw how great Imam was in terms of morality and heard his statements when he wanted to go back he said to Imam Hassan when I enter Medina, you and your father were the worst people before Allah in my eyes. Now that I'm living Medina, you were the best people before Allah in my eye. This is what we call clemency, which is the main factor for ethics. And Imam's clemency saved the poor man. The man had the capacity to be salvaged and become a friend of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. And he was salvaged both in his life and hereafter. It was a real pity if he hadn't been saved by Imam. If there was no clemency, he would not be saved. And we should be clement with our relatives, family members, acquaintances, our classmates, elderly and young members of our families. We should try to draw people closer and help those who have fallen. This does not happen with knowledge only and it requires clemency and ethics. One should study ethics. And keep the score of his actions so that he can be practically ethical. He must be strong that even if someone insulted him for one hour, he wouldn't be affected. It doesn't mean that he should be indifferent. Being indifferent is another issue. He should behave people finely and show an appropriate reaction. Sometimes it might need to react bitterly, but they are exceptions. In the Holy Quran, the Prophet Abraham has given a high position. In the Holy Quran and in the other places, a high position has been given to him. It was Adam who founded Kaaba, not Prophet Abraham. Adam was the first person who performed tawaf around Keba, performed Hajj, went to Mount of Arafat, the land of Mina, and was guided by Gabriel telling him what to do. Over the years, then perhaps over hundreds of years, Keba was destroyed and no traces of it could be seen. At the time of a prophet Abraham, he, he reconstructed Kaaba on the same foundations. The Holy Quran does not speak of Adam in the story of founding Kaaba. And many people might think of prophet Abraham as the first founder of Kaaba. And when Abraham and his smell raised the foundations of the house.
that when we want to give someone the credit for doing something, we mention the pioneers' names, not the people after them. The first founder of Kaaba was Adam. But in the Holy Quran, it has been mentioned in a way that if someone doesn't know, they think Prophet Abraham was the first person who founded Kaaba. Prophet Abraham has been given much respect. Such respect was given to Abraham that prayers must be said where Prophet Abraham set foot. And appoint for yourselves a place of prayers, understanding place of Abraham. Say prayers where Prophet Abraham stepped. It can be said that Prophet Abraham is given an extremely high position by Allah. Similarly, when Allah in the Holy Quran of Holy Book of Quran and intends to salute Abraham, he says Abraham was mild, imploring, penitent. While Abraham had many other good qualities, but Allah chooses only two of them to show us that these qualities matter to him. Penitent means he uses sigh a lot, and it is a Hyperhole. He performed night prayers and cried out of the fear of Allah and sighed because he was not satisfied with the services he had done for Allah. That was why he used to sigh a lot. Another quality was that he was clement with people. With the problems, misfortunes, and accusations, he used to be clement. This is clemency, which is the main factor of ethics. Everyone should start one day, and today could be that of that day for you. Decide to be tolerant in cases where, where you can treat people badly or react like themselves. This is a difference between patience and clemency. You are patient in situations where you're not able, when you're sick and you cannot recover quickly. In such situations when you have a problem and can't avoid, you don't complain a lot and remain grateful. This is patience. If you're oppressed and can't defend yourself, then you are patient. But if you can't retaliate and you don't or even condone, then it is called clemency. Allah Almighty has given a high position to Prophet Abraham and when he wants to describe him, he uses the quality of clemency for him. He uses the superlative form of clemency for him, the most clement. Now, if you don't have such a clemency, you have to start practicing. Then, clemency makes all our efforts to acquire imposed knowledge and, and convince knowledge, which is the divine light. I hope by the blessings of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, especially Imam Mahdi, may Allah hasten his reappearance, who promises of his intercession Allah Almighty grants us all this opportunity to make our imposed knowledge and in convinced knowledge which is the divine light May Allah bless Muhammad and his pure descendants.